Coming up on Mountain News at 6, the man who was convicted of murdering a London police officer by driving drunk learns how long he'll be in prison. And students at one school in Perry County return to their building for the first time since it was damaged during the July 2022 flood. Temperatures right now are in the 80s and 90s and the warming trend continues. Details in a few minutes. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 6. A judge has sentenced a Southern Kentucky man to prison for the murder of a police officer. Casey Byrd was convicted by a Warren County jury for the death of London Police Sergeant Logan Medlock, who died almost two years ago. Today, Byrd learned his official punishment for the crime of murder, DUI, and criminal mischief. WYMT's Phil Pendleton spoke with Sergeant Medlock's family and London Police about this end to a lengthy case. Family, friends, and first responders filed into a London courtroom on what was a very special day many years in Logan Medlock's life. Today is Logan's birthday. He would be 28, 28 years old today if he was here with us today. You know, we're having to celebrate his birthday in a courthouse. They packed the courtroom to see Casey Bird sent to prison. Bird was convicted two weeks ago by a Warren County jury for Medlock's murder. Bird drove drunk in October of 2022, and testimony was that he went 70 miles in a 35 zone, ran a red light after consuming a lot of beer and whiskey at a friend's house, and crashed into Medlock's cruiser. He received the jury's recommended sentence of 20 years on the murder charge. Nobody wins in this situation, uh, but we do celebrate here today that that the judicial system done its job. I did speak with Casey Bird's attorney over the telephone and he tells me that they are pleased that the jury came back with the minimum sentence that they could receive. And he also says that Casey Bird will be appealing this verdict. But Medlock's family says the jury could have also returned a lesser charge than murder. We done a lot of praying and you know, we had to put it in God's hands and whatever his will is, will be done. We're happy that justice was served. Um, you know, we're, we're happy with the outcome, but you know, it's, it still doesn't bring back uh, Logan. Sergeant Medlock received numerous awards for his drunk driving enforcement. Police say that dedication will continue to be pushed by the entire department. In Laurel County, Phil Pendleton, WYMT Mountain News. Bird's attorney also asked in the pre-sentence investigation report that the Department of Corrections note that Bird is a former corrections officer and that could impact his security while being held. A Pike County man is facing charges after he exposed himself to a woman. It happened Saturday when Gary Runyon approached a woman at the Appalachian Plaza parking lot where he, quote, showed his genital area. In the arrest citation, it claims Runyon followed the woman to the gas station, still trying to harass her. Police say when they made contact with Runyon, he appeared to be intoxicated. He was taken to the Pike County Detention Center. A Louisa man is facing charges after police found drugs in his underwear in West Virginia. During the weekend, officials with the Wayne County Drug Enforcement Unit stopped a car. And during the stop, they say they noticed Kyler Messer, one of the passengers in the vehicle, trying to hide items. That's when police found meth along with baggies and fentanyl. Police also found a handgun and money. A woman is facing charges after she reportedly tried to resist arrest in Laurel County. Police were called out to Old Salem School Road yesterday after receiving word about the incident from Laurel 911. Police later learned that Rachel Vaughn had reportedly been on property that was not hers for several hours. After being told to leave several times, she kept coming back. Police then arrested Vaughn, and they say she kicked an officer and a police cruiser. We're seeing temperatures right now in the 80s and 90s, even mid-90s, uh, across portions of uh, Wayne County in uh, Kentucky. You can see right there Monticello's at 94, 91 in Somerset, 89 in Irvin, 90 in Moorhead, 86 is the current temperature in Jackson, as well as Hazard. Now you go towards Grundy, Clintwood, and Wise, the upper elevations, we're seeing temperatures 
in the upper 70s and low 80s. You factor in that feels like temperature. Look at Monticello, 99 degrees at this hour, 92 in Somerset, 88 in London, 93 in Manchester, 91 in Harlan, 88 is the current feels like temperature in Pikeville. All is quiet right now on live pinpoint Doppler radar. Rain chances will start to pick up as we go throughout uh, the second half of the work week. But other than that, high pressure is in control right now. And it's going to stay in control as we go throughout the day on Tuesday. If you think today was warm, wait till we go into tomorrow, Wednesday and Thursday. And because of this, a first alert weather day has been declared because of the excessive heat. Some places could see heat indices in the triple digits. Next 12 hours call for temperatures to be in the mid 70s by 1 a.m. 69 by 7 a.m. I'll have your complete first alert forecast in a few minutes. Steve. All right, Eric, thank you. It was the first day of classes for Buckhorn School students and administrators. This first day marked not just the first day of classes, but a return to their newly renovated school building, which was flooded in July 2022. WIMT's Chandler Wilcox tells us how the Buckhorn School reopening makes a big impact. The moment was described as surreal. Students walking through doors and halls of Buckhorn School for the first time in years. I've been here since I was in kindergarten and uh, at a, such a young age. I mean, I remember the building from how it was then and just seeing it now with all the new stuff. It's just, it, it is kind of surreal. Administrators had to delay the start time because of construction. They say they are now more than 90% completed. Our gym is still being worked on. Our library is still being finished. Although they may not be finished, student Jody Stamper described returning as a dream. There's flaws, but those don't even matter to us. You know, they just, it feels so good to be able to be home. Numbers have shown results from that feeling. Administrators say they had a first day attendance of 325 students, which is more than last year. We expect those numbers to increase, you know, since we just now got the building open. Hickerson says attendance will more than likely increase because of shorter travel time. Here, you know, my parents, 30 minutes would be our would be probably our longest drive out. Hickerson also says she expects transfers from other schools as students look for smaller settings. Regardless of how many students, however, for those who are there now, it is a return home. In Buckhorn, Channel Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. Buckhorn school students were going to class at the old A.B. Combs School since the flood, which is, of course, a much longer drive. Principal Jennifer Hickerson also says they expect crews to be working during afternoons to get those renovations completed. Now, of course, Buckhorn School started its new school year today, but there are also some other schools returning to class today or later this week. Corbin Independent School students return today. Classes are also back in session for those at Paintsville Independent Schools and students at Williamsburg Independent Schools will return on Wednesday. You can find a list of when schools in our area started back or will start back at WYMT.com. Road work is underway for parts of Pulaski County. A stretch of East Mount Vernon Street was shut down today for repairs. The section between South Central Avenue and College Street, Kentucky 2296 is closed to traffic. It is expected to open back up on Friday, but that could change based on weather and delays. Congressman Hal Rogers is co-host of a fundraiser tonight in Lexington with Vice Presidential Candidate J.D. Vance. Tickets start at $2,500 per person. Rogers told me last week he believes the November election results could go in a number of directions. This is likely to be a very close election for president and House and Senate. Mm -hmm. uh, the House could flip or even get more Republican and the Senate the same way. Rogers says the country remains evenly divided and he does not see that changing. You can see my full interview with the Dean of the House on Issues and Answers tonight at 7 here on WYMT. In a world where governments are working to move away from energy resources like coal, Senator Johnny Turner says he is not willing to give up that easy. WYMT's Madison Carmouche spoke with Turner about how he is enforcing laws which keep the industry afloat. Senator Johnny Turner says he is holding government agencies accountable when it comes to the coal industry. So this government trying to kill the coal industry just, it ain't gonna happen in Kentucky, ma'am. Just ain't gonna happen. 
Turner wrote a letter to the Energy and Environment Cabinet about the holdup for water permits in the coal industry specifically. But we as legislators fund that department and direct the, the means and ways that it should act in treating the industry of Kentucky, specifically the coal industry here in eastern Kentucky. In its response letter, the Energy and Environment Cabinet claims the regulatory time frame is 180 days, and there is only one permit past that timeline at this time. I take it that the department will extend those that haven't been, and they better be getting in touch with and reissuing the permits of those people that are shut down because we put them on notice. Turner says as the sponsor of the bill, it is his duty to make sure the law is being properly carried out for the people. It's just a rippling effect. We can't stand that right now. With the state and the, the people that live and eat and pay their bills just can't tolerate that right now. And that's the whole purpose of us as legislators, making sure that the government follows what we pass to protect our people here in Eastern Kentucky. Turner says his initial concern comes as the September 30th deadline for permit applications nears and an influx of applications is a possibility. In Harlan, Madison Carmouche, WYMT Mountain News. The Energy and Environment Cabinet say they have issued 46 coal general permits since June 17th of this year and do not see the upcoming deadline as an issue for operations. According to a report from Kentucky Health News, 13 of Kentucky's 71 hospitals are at risk of closing, with six being in immediate danger of being closed. With the cost of running a hospital growing, they rely on government assistance in order to stay open. CEO of the Kentucky Hospital Association, Nancy Galvani, says hospitals are not receiving the financial support needed for rural hospitals to stay fully operational. They're not negotiated with the hospitals. And unfortunately for Kentucky, we are at one of the lowest reimbursed states under both of those programs. And the reimbursement isn't covering the actual cost to pay the nurses, to pay the supplies, to deliver the care to the patients. Galvani says people should reach out to their local legislators so they can make policy changes that can help get more reimbursement for rural hospitals in Kentucky. All right, here's a look at the weather headlines for tonight. First of all, record breaking heat is in the forecast. Rain chances will pick up midweek and then we're going to cool off again. Details on the first alert forecast in a few minutes. And flood recovery efforts are still underway throughout the mountains with organizations hoping to help flood survivors, including in Floyd County.